I am the living legend, the true alpha male. That is a fact. Here's what we need to talk about right now. We need to talk about the concept of being a handsome man versus being a guy that looks cool. I think this is very relevant. And I think it is flying under the radar completely. One of the themes I keep bringing up is a lot of you guys in your teenage years and in your 20s are thinking like gay men. You're assuming that the person you're trying to attract reduces you to how you physically look because that's how you treat females. That's how you're attracted to them. And I admit it, when I met my wife, I saw her from across a crowded room full of hundreds of people and I zeroed in on her and I went straight to her and I impressed her with my conversation. Can you believe it that? I impressed her with conversation. And I spent, we were in this long line waiting to be extras in this uh, filming for a show called CMT Crossroads. And I thought, hey, I can carry on a conversation with this girl for hours. So I did, and that's where it all began. But for my wife, she stands by this story. She never thought of me as attractive until the moment I asked her out, which is actually months later. We were actually, and that was a risk that maybe in hindsight I shouldn't take. And granted, we've been married 11 years now, so she and I talked about it recently, and maybe it all worked out that I didn't ask her out immediately. But I knew there was something special when I met her, and I wanted her. I think ultimately probably it was subconsciously, I wanted her to see that I was securing myself and I was a stable person and that I was worth the long haul. I wasn't somebody she'd go out with once or twice and then forget about and be too busy for. So for me, I felt it was worth making that investment for. But the point is, women don't reduce men to their looks the way that men reduce females to their looks. That's an ongoing theme I'm talking about. And if you think otherwise, then you're thinking like a gay man. Because that means you don't know, understand that women are attracted to men differently. With that being said, let's assess this situation. Let's, let's assess this look, all right? So you're looking at a fresh number one guard bus cut. You're looking at a seven week old beard. Now, many would argue that I could trim it up and it'd look better, but honestly, this is just my style. I like this better. I've never had a beard this long before, and I really like, I like the number one guard buzz cut, just a little bit of stubble. Now, the question is, is this good looking? Am I a good looking guy like this? Does that even matter? Because ultimately, Nick Shell, the living legend, would tell you, you being a good looking man is not as relevant is being a cool looking guy. I do look like a cool guy, that's, that's a fact. I'm broadcasting my masculinity. Hair, who cares? Beard, yes. Got a head start on the whole Movember thing, I guess. I already look like a guy who is confident in myself. I, I just look that way already by default. But do I, am I good looking? See, that's, that's where I come in. I, I love to hack things, to get inside the fundamental mindset of why things are the way they are. Part of the reason I'm of service to you, I'm here to remind you, what's less important is being a good looking guy. What matters more is being an interesting looking guy, a cool looking guy. I don't need to look like any other quote good looking guy. And Let's try to imagine what this perfect, good-looking guy looks like. Okay, so already, I'm 5'9", so, so he's like over six foot tall. Maybe he has tanner skin than me. Maybe he has blue eyes. Maybe he has blonde hair. Maybe his hairline's down here. Maybe he's really athletic and into sports. And all. Okay, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. I would rather be this guy because this is what I've got to work with. And I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm totally owning it. Now granted, one of the things we're told our whole lives is just be yourself, man. And I do agree to some degree. Yes, work with what you have and unleash your potential. You know, but at the same time, sometimes being yourself can be the worst advice you get from anybody. 
Because if you are someone who is insecure and doesn't believe in yourself, then stop being yourself. You need to be somebody else. You need to be a version of yourself that actually believes in yourself. At my church yesterday, the pastor was talking about how a lot of times when we talk to ourselves subconsciously, we're putting ourselves down. I would say I'm actually an exception to the rule because I had learned about that years ago that that's often what we do. Like, oh man, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I forgot that. Nick Schell doesn't say that. If I forget something, then I make an effort next time to find a way to remember it. So like tomorrow, we're having this thing at the office where we're bringing in food for breakfast or whatever. In much confidence, I have said, you know what, everybody? I can make some great cucumber sandwiches, Jewish rye bread, cream cheese, Italian seasoning. It's gonna be great. So I've got two platters full of these things. And, but I can't forget them. So what did I do? I got the keys to my Jeep and they're in the refrigerator next to those two trays of cucumber sandwiches so that I won't forget. Perhaps the 23 year old version of me would say, oh man, I can't believe I forgot that I'm so stupid. See, I don't, I don't talk to myself that way. And I've, I've mentioned that before on my channel here, is that it's funny how we can easily think of, you know, someone who's being a bully or a jerk, you know, putting us down. You know, you can't talk to me that way. But yeah, how do we talk to ourselves is the, is the first question. Because we shouldn't be hypocrites about it. If we're going to be offended or angry about someone implying that we're inferior somehow, are we subliminally talking to ourselves that same way? Are we saying, oh man, you're not that good looking because you're only 19 and you've got the hairline of Nick Shell. So imagine what you'll be like by the time you're 35. And he always talks about when you're 35, that's the defining age on whether you're gonna be losing your hair the rest of your life. And look at you, you're 19, no one's gonna like you. See, so many of you talk to yourselves that way. Let's face it, I'm a confident guy. No one's here to deny that, right? I don't speak down to myself. I speak up to myself. I encourage myself. I figure out ways to get around the solution. So, I openly talk about the fact I'm an average looking guy. And I've never needed to be anything more than average looking. Because I think looking interesting and being interesting, looking cool and being cool, looking different and being different, ultimately have a better value of your identity as a male than you having to be focused on your looks. I mean, that's, again, that's a girl thing. Girls are the ones being judged unfairly by men reduced to the looks and largely that's how men are attracted to women. That, that's like the main thing that gets the whole thing going. Not for females. It's different. Males have the advantage, the obvious advantage, because we're not reduced to our looks the way that we reduce women to looks. Now with that being said, that's not to say, I mean, and, and I point this out all the time. It's funny too that like, Guys will say, oh no, I'm gonna go bald, no one will like me. But then they just immediately like attach themselves to some supermodel. Like, no beautiful woman's ever gonna date me. Okay, so how about you don't go after nines and tens, you go after fives and sixes. Because ultimately, beyond looks, the fact that she's not crazy has a lot to do with this whole thing too. Otherwise, if you only chase nines and tens, guess what? Even if, if they are attracted to you, there's a good chance they're crazy. Because the, the hotter she is, the higher the likelihood that she's crazy. So, so maybe the fives and sixes are a better thing because they're not as crazy. That's something I've learned. Now granted, I feel like I found an exception to the rule with my wife. Because she's undeniably beautiful. But she's not crazy. Now granted, in the general generics scheme of things, you know, I've heard this joke before that that uh, all women are, are crazy and all men are dumb. All men are idiots. And I think there's some truth in that to some degree. Because men are decisive. They do have plans. Women, not so much. And part of our role as men is to help guide them and direct them and be that stability. But we also can come across as idiots because if we provide the solution in the wrong tone, the wrong word, the wrong phrase, then we become idiots and then it backfires. So there's all this whole thing. I'm talking about next level stuff. 
stuff that actually matters right now. So ultimately, do you need to be good looking? Of course not. Just work with what you have. And that way you are being yourself, but you're being the best version of yourself. But there's nothing at all wrong with standing out. That's something I've done my whole life. Being an average guy with average abilities, finding a way to stand out because that's more interesting. Being interesting, being different, is actually of better value when you're a man. Maybe not so much for females. Again, they're unfairly judged and reduced to the look so much more. Men have the advantage, if you ask me. Your comments belong right here.